Lane Hudson era is upon us in Montreal as he is set to make his NHL debut versus the Detroit Red Wings in maybe the most hyped game of the season. This is going to be an amazing game coming up very soon, but we also have to get into some prospect talk and just how important these games are for the Montreal Canadiens in their journey to the bottom of the standings, all coming up on this live episode of Habs Digest. Guys, we got 60 people in here and we just started. Thank you all so, so much. And hey, if you want to push this to other Lane Hudson fans, other members of the Bone Zone, give us a like. Push us out into YouTube. We want everyone coming in here sharing this hype for Lane Hudson. Give me some hype for Lane Hudson in the chat. I also wanted to shout out Dennis Ranger, Denis Ranger. Not really sure. Either way, thank you very much for becoming a channel member. Um, Yeah, just an amazing stuff before this stream even started. If you guys are a channel member or if you give a donation to the stream, we will be answering your messages in top priority but jesse we gotta just open this up with lane it's time lane hudson will make his nhl debut now you might be watching the recap of this stream after the game's already happened i'm not really sure but hey we're talking about this before regardless lane hudson he's coming in and my gosh the team seems to have welcomed him with open arms he said it's pretty surreal just being here with this group it's really cool i'm really excited the guys have been great to me they were really super inviting made it really easy for me to get comfortable and in this the uh, thing here from bpm spa lane après a passé au prochain niveau his agent said that the montreal culture well it's something to behold just how good it is jesse how hyped are you how hyped is everyone in the chat for lane hudson for the bone zone I am so excited for this. This is the big hype up for Lane live stream. I'm loving this, right? The fact we get to go live right before his first game because this is, like you said, Josh, one of the games I've been looking forward to the most all year. You know, studying him, watching him from last year. We're seeing all the highlights. When is he going to come? When is he going to arrive? Well, the answer is tonight. And it's in his words, as he says, it's, it's surreal, right? The fact that just... Being here, he's getting this awesome invitation just and welcome just from, you know, his teammates right away. They had the little mini shootout earlier. He's showing the dangle, winning it for his team already. Might have just been in practice. This guy's, look at the hands here. So silky, just tucking it One in five hole here. You know, one more time. Look at this. For the win, Team Red, tucking it in, right? Getting the props from all of his teammates afterwards. But Josh, like, when you have a player like this, it's like, it's easy to respect the skill and everything else like that. But, like, I feel like a lot of the players on the Habs are also looking forward to playing with him as well. Yeah, of course. And this is, of course, a, a national national holiday. As Matt points out with our first Super Chat of the stream, <laughs> happy Lane yes, Hudson sir. debut day, day to anyone who celebrates. We are certainly <laughs> celebrating here and we are celebrating with you, Matt. Thank you for your continued support in the streams. Thank you very, very much for the donation. Uh, incredible, incredible stuff. But yeah, but we are super hyped for Lane Hudson. Like you said, Jesse, it's not just Lane who's pumped to play with his Habs teammates. His Habs teammates are pumped to play with him. And as of now, as of everything I've seen so far, it seems like it's going to be Lane Hudson paired with David Saval. You might see me looking over here. I'm taking a look at Twitter just to make sure we're not missing anything before the game starts. But it seems like it's going to be Hudson and Savard. And Savard has shown so far this season this uncanny ability to play very, very well with other players um, and kind of like boost their 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 level. And we're talking young players like Arbor Jackeye, right? And I think Lane Hudson in his debut game could be a really good fit next to Savard. Jesse, right now, I like that pairing. But going forward, do you think maybe next season, do you think this is maybe a pairing they're going to keep exploring? Or do you think they maybe have something else in mind for Lane Hudson? I think it's good for right now, just for a lot of the experience. And as Hudson was saying, just in kind of the pregame sort of interviews is, you know, that Savar has so much experience. So it really makes sense kind of pairing that again, that mobility with more of kind of the stay at home sort of guy. Of course, we see this a lot in the NHL, right? Yeah. We're having more of the offensive guy pair with more the stay at home, right? But I really like it. But to be honest, I think we have somebody in the wings where we've already seen an amazing chemistry at training camp, and that is David Reinbacher. Oh, yeah. I kind of like to think of him like the Starsky to, to the Hutch, you know, and Lane Hudson here, you know, like that pairing. Like, I think that they're just going to be an awesome combo. Like, we've already seen it already but like just the mobility and maybe Ron Bacher playing a little bit more of that defensive sort of thing but you know he's so smart offensively how these two could just kind of feed off each other even in the offensive zone you know as defensemen I think it's going to be really interesting to see yeah that's going to be like yeah that dynamic is going to be something that I'm really excited to watch with Lane Hudson not only in this game but going forward because again some people might be watching this after the game has happened and if you are like we want to project a bit into the future right 
But what we want to see from Lane Hudson in the game Monday and the game Tuesday against Detroit, for me, Jesse, is just to see that he looks like an NHL player. And that's something we said about Joshua Wah when he made his debut. He looks like he belongs at the NHL level. That's what I want to see because we know there's going to be a ton of competition next year heading into training camp. But hey, it says something already that they pulled Jaden Struble of all defensemen from the lineup to put Lane Hudson in. Of course, that's as of earlier today. I'm potentially might change. We'll be going into the lineups once that comes up on Twitter. Like the warm up lines, maybe they've changed. But just to see Lane Hudson prove he's an NHL level guy is something I'm really, really excited to see. But that offensive ability, Jesse, I've seen people ask already, how many points is he going to get in his debut? Guys, there's a poll up now. I'd like you for, for all of you to vote in that poll. We got 93 votes in it. Vote how many minutes you think Lane Hudson will play in this game. Jesse, what do you think in points-wise? I think we get one point from Lane Hudson between this game and next. I think he's going to get an assist, but I would love to, for him to get a goal. I'm always the conservative guy. May, may, like When it comes to these predictions, may, maybe you're going to go a bit more all out and predict a goal, maybe a hat trick for Lane. Well, I like that, though. I think getting a point in you know one of his first two NHL games would be great, right? But we can't rule that off. I think that, you know, he could definitely be on a great pace, you know, just for the fact that, like, he's cool as ice going into this game. Like, he's not worried at all, which lends me to think he's probably going to be playing pretty good. I wouldn't be surprised to see him on the scoreboard, you know, in these next two games, whether it be a goal or an assist, right? Because his whole attitude, like, going into this is just like, this is a game I love playing hockey. And at the end of the day, like as a sport, I'm getting to do something I love, right? So talk about having an attitude where you're just going in and want to have fun. And it's funny, like we hear that almost all the time from Marty St. Louis, like just remembering that, well, this is a game like, oh, this is how we want our players to come in. Like just remember it's a hockey game. It's okay to make mistakes, but play your game. And he's also saying like, show us what you can do though as well. And that's what I like from Hudson is like with a player like that, like you kind of need to take the leash off of him. Of course you want to be responsible in his own ways, but you want to feel like he can make those big plays and he has the opportunity to do so, which I think with Martin St. Louis is going to be such an amazing, he's going to love having this tool in his kit now just to be able to use. I think that Lane's definitely going to benefit from, from his knowledge as well. Yeah, we know, we know Habs management loves to pump their coach up, coach Marty up all the time, this kind of stuff. And I think it's going to be a match made in heaven with Lane. But, but Jesse, we got to pivot quickly. We got another super chat from Vincent Cadieu, the best Hab show. Shout out Malc Cadieu. Shout out to Malc. Shout out to you, Vincent. Thank you very much for your first ever super chat on the channel. Guys, just a reminder, I don't mean to keep saying this, but we will answer your messages in priority if you get a donation or you become a channel member like uh, Dennis did earlier in the stream. Again, just unbelievable support from you guys. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I see John's message there. Uh, Late to chat. Sorry, who is Hudson paired with? As of the practice lines earlier today, it seems to be David Savard, but we don't know the warm-up lines yet, so maybe we'll have some different things come warm-ups. It seems like Struble was taken out of the lineup. It looks like it's going to be Matheson and Barron on the top pairing. We got Harris with Kovacevic, and we have uh, Lane Hudson with David Savard, so it could be a bit interesting. Um, but let's just go and look back at Lane Hudson's college stats, because this is something uh, that we've looked at a lot, but just, to, just a reminder to people, oh, but how great is it to finally see 2023-24 Montreal Canadiens there? on his hockey db page of course lane hudson born in holland michigan playing against the detroit red wings team from michigan now could say his hometown team i suppose but he was kind of raised in illinois in a, in a suburb outside of chicago so i don't know what lane would say i think he was a blackhawks fan growing up but it is what it is still born in michigan playing against detroit but look at these numbers right like just look at these numbers 49 points in 38 games this year 48 points in 39 games the year before 15 goals in each of the seasons this guy is the pinnacle of consistency leading his team to the frozen four i mean he wasn't a finalist for the hobie baker this year jesse but that offensive potential that's what we're looking for when he sets foot on NHL ice. Now, I'm seeing a lot of people say, oh, those dangles he pulled off in college, those aren't going to fly at the NHL level. Well, when you have a guy like Lane Hudson, a guy with an incredible level of competitiveness, a crazy level of like, I got to prove every any doubt or wrong, like I want to win. These are the kind of guys that are going to be able to adapt very, very quickly. And maybe we'll see a rough start tonight, or maybe he'll come out flying. But one thing I am certain about is that it won't take Lane Hudson very long to adjust to the NHL ice. And I think we could see some uh, some incredible offensive flashes very, very quickly in this game. Definitely. And I want him to kind of hold on to the puck a, bit, a little bit and feel like he kind of can make, because that's when he's at his best is when he's kind of shifty, right? And those are those sort of a very high risk sort of plays though, right? When you're a defenseman, 
and you're looking to kind of deke out that attacker, right? If you're making a mistake, it's going the other way. But Laney plays with the fire, but he's shown he can be successful. And he needs to really kind of take those risks to do so, to be the offensive player that he's really born to be. But it's so funny. It's like, He's going to go out with that attitude of just kind of winning and kind of doing whatever it takes to do so because that's the biggest thing about his game is the compete level. And I find that very interesting when you're just hearing about, okay, who was his favorite player growing up? Patrick Kane. And he was mentioning, he's like, the one thing about Patrick Kane is that he's a winner. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, we will be playing against tonight. Yeah. Is that this guy is a winner, you know? And he's seen him win a lot, right? So you have to feel, and this is your team kind of growing up, this is what shapes you, right? So this is part of his DNA. This is who he is. So one way or another, he just wants to be a difference maker, kind of like Slaff. Like, you know, for sure, maybe he wants to get some points in one of these, you know, next two games. But the most important is really just helping this team win. And that's what makes me so excited about him. It's like, you know, he's going to be doing his darnest just to make that happen. I think you have to respect that when you have that skill, but also just that determination as well. That's what I love so much about this player. It's going to be amazing. People are so hyped for it. And Jesse, we got another channel member, Matt. Thank you for the donations. Thank you for becoming a channel member. Welcome to the Snipe Selly tier. I'll play the Super Chat animation for you just because why not? Appreciate you so, so much. Thank you for being here every single stream. And guys, these Monday streams, well, they're not going to stop even as we head into the offseason. We plan to keep going with that. And we also got a message from Denis, the newest channel member. I'm going to assume it's Denis because the message was en français. Bien content, je parle anglais et français. Moi aussi, j'essaie aussi. On parle français. Euh, J'habite à Québec. Donc, euh, oui, moi, je travaille en français chaque jour. On peut parler un peu en français si vous voulez. Mais, euh, mais oui, merci beaucoup, Denis. Merci beaucoup pour devenir membre. Um, yeah, Jesse, this is, this is one of the most hyped things I, I, I've seen for the Habs in a while. Now, let's look a bit forward to, to next year. Thank you, Matt. We love doing these weekly streams for you. Let's look a, a bit forward to next year because there's a lot of question marks. There's going to be a ton of fighting for this defensive spot, right? We got Lane Hudson. We got Reinbacher. We have Baron, who still really wants to prove himself. We have Mayu coming up. Adam Engstrom still not really sure if he's going to come over yet. And we clearly see that Struble is coming out of the lineup for Hudson. Now, that's not necessarily a pecking order thing yet. It's just more so to get Hudson into the game. How confident are we? And I want everyone in chat to, to, to give me something as well. Give, give us your message on what your thoughts are. How confident are we that Lane Hudson will be a Montreal Canadian at the start of next year? Because me personally, I, I look, I trust Habs management in what they will do. And I don't want to put these expectations too high on Lane Hudson too early. Because that's a danger we fall into, especially when a prospect is hype. People get disappointed if they're not amazing right away. But just my gut feeling is I believe that Lane Hudson will show enough in these final two games and in training camp to earn that spot out of camp. Do I believe Habs management is probably planning to send him to Laval to play a bit with David Reinbacher first? That might be their plan, but I truly believe that it will be Lane Hudson on the Montreal Canadiens next year. What do you think? And I want the commenters to, to leave some thoughts too. I like that take. You know, you have to feel like Jordan Harris. This is what he did, right? He burned, you know, his entry-level contract that first year, was able to play a couple games. And then you saw him be part of the rotation for the Montreal Canadiens next year. Now, that being said, we're further along in our development, you know, right now than when Jordan Harris was just a couple of years ago, right? So it's more competitive. It's a little bit harder to do that same thing where you're just coming from the NCAA and basically the first year up with the pros in your first full year. So it will be tough to do given the competition, but I really believe we're talking about Lane Hudson here. And that's what's going to really make it tough on some of these other young guys we like a lot. Because I think a lot of Habs fans, we like Jaden Struble. Justin Barron even has been better mm -hmm. in his time coming up. Now his game hasn't been perfect. A couple lapses. In general, his game has been better since coming back to the NHL. You don't want to write this guy off either at all. You know, so it's it's going to be a really big battle. And you have to feel like this will be shaped a lot by whatever's going on in the offseason. But he's part of the long-term plans. I feel like they're going to give him every opportunity to succeed. But most importantly, that our boy Lane, he's just going to take that opportunity. That's one thing about him. That's one player that I just... Simply just don't want to bet against. Yeah, he, he he's so, so good. But I also completely agree with a lot of members in the chat. Uh, Denis says, Habs Digest is my favorite podcast on Habs Can I Jam. Thank you so much, Denis. He just have fun and score the points no matter. Yeah, I, I it doesn't really matter what he does. Just let him have fun. But I agree with a lot of the comments that it's not a big deal if he goes to the AHL to develop. We saw that work very well for Coffee. We've seen it work for a lot of other prospects. It's not a bad thing. 
And I'm perfectly okay to see Lane Hudson and David Reinbacher in the AHL to start next year. I think that would be amazing just to use the development system and not rush the guys just because you're hyped about them. So I could see it going either way. I'm just going through my personal gut feeling is that Lane is good enough. And like you said, Jesse, you can't count a guy like this out with his level of competitiveness and his skill. Uh, I'm going to put a new poll here, though, because you guys shared some great answers, but it's always easier when, when, we, uh, when we can put a poll, right? Uh, where will, oh, here we go, Lane hudson start next season and we're gonna go let's see ahl nhl actually i'm gonna put laval and montreal because that's actually a lot more clear for you guys uh montreal there we go and leave me your answers in that poll um also guys if you're noticing if maybe you can't send a message you have to be subscribed to send a message in chat i see 230 of you here we do have a lot of chats but if you want to chat just hit the subscribe button because we have these weekly streams we have daily videos so if you're enjoying this stuff hit the subscribe button join along with us on this journey to the end of the season and into the draft lottery and also while we're here i know i ask you guys a lot but guys there's 250 of you here almost let's give a like let's give a like here get that number up we're at 56 i want to see at least 100 as chessy we get our third super chat of the stream from the number oh one fan angie antelinas how come all those people donated before i did i'm still fan number one keep it up guys loving all <laughs> your content well this mug right here is uh is the representation of angie number one fan not only of the montreal canadians but of us thank you so so much give some love to angie give some love to vincent to matt to denis to everyone who's who's donating so generously to this stream thank you guys so 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 much for all the support unbelievable stuff and i see for you in the chat hey for you welcome back um oh my gosh hello hey fellow islander oh hey manny manny's from newfoundland too i'm taking a guess that that's what uh, that's what you mean by that cheers if that's true um i'm gonna try and read through some of these some of these other comments but yeah guys leave leave some love there for, for angie unbelievable that some people have donated before her Un unbelievable well you know what some people got here got here a bit earlier so you know is what it is thank you so much though really really appreciate it. manny yes sir where are you from manny well you don't need to tell me that if you don't want to but of course i'm a townie as i've made very very clear i'm from st john's matt says the 139 dollar membership yeah uh look those memberships were made <laughs> quite a long time ago uh i'm pretty sure that one was literally just made as a joke uh, with no expectation of anyone ever uh, signing up to that but anyone that is any kind of channel member again just unbelievable stuff manny's from torbay well shout out to you manny but, i mean i i you know i almost said basically town that would probably offend you so i'm gonna take that back uh I appreciate torbay like it a lot love playing holy trinity in basketball growing up because we always beat them um uh, Jesse, I, I don't know. Uh, let's let's maybe move on to some other stuff because because this game tonight has a lot of implications for the standings and the standings here not only for Montreal but also for Detroit, who is in this crazy race for the wild card two spot in the Eastern Conference. Um, it's an unbelievable race here. Pittsburgh eighty six points, Philly eighty seven, Washington eighty seven, the Islanders ninety, who are solidly in that spot right now. But it looks like Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Washington, Detroit, all in this race. Not only can Montreal play spoiler. But these games have a big, uh, big impact on Montreal's draft position as well. As right now, if we look back at that in the Eastern Conference, Montreal is only two points behind Ottawa with two games left to go. And they're only one point behind Arizona. And Arizona only has one game left. So I know we're partly team tank, Jesse. But I also kind of want to win. I know people are saying, let's just get a 7-6 loss, whatever, get lots of goals from our prospects. What are you feeling for these final two games? Would you rather play spoiler for the Red Wings? I don't really have any hate towards them. Would you rather just see prospects do good and nothing else really happen? Uh, what, what are your, what's your wish list for these final two games as to maybe where the Habs end up in these standings? Basically what we've been doing all year long, and that's competing, right? It's crazy to think that 42 games this year have been one goal games. That's more than half of our regular season has been one goal games. Isn't that amazing to see? It's just really competing. If you're such a young team, and that's why so many people say that the Habs, they're the best, they're the best worst team in the league, right? Just because they're having they're a young team, but just these small, very small lot losses, right? So you have to feel they're able to just kind of turn the corner. They're really right there to really kind of competing. So I just want to see that as we're kind of going forward there. I think it's always good for the boys. I think they almost kind of deserve it. Uh, with a lot of these one goal games, it's like they almost haven't got as as many, you know, wins as they really deserve, right? But of course, you know, I think Ken's kind of happy in a certain way too, because we're looking to not do this rebuild again. I think in the top five or, you know, even maybe in the top 10 next year, I think we're looking to be much more competitive. So I don't know if you're Kenny Hughes, maybe you do kind of want to just maximize on this and you're very okay with the team just kind of losing these last couple games again with the idea of just doing it right, getting that good pick. 
and then kind of being done from it, you know, from there where, you know, maybe we have other prospects where we don't necessarily need to rely on that really high first pick to really kind of get us there. So, you know, I'm just looking for the boys to really compete tonight, put a solid effort and really finish off the season strong. Yeah, you know what? And I think that's awesome. Just give a solid effort. I don't care if there's wins and losses because at the end of the day, especially when we look at this draft class, like the, uh, oh, did I accidentally, there we go, I got to click back. When we look at this draft class, there's so many guys that could be picked within that, you know, two or three to 10 range. And even if Montreal finishes seventh, or maybe they get the eighth pick or something, because they can jump around a little bit once that draft lottery happens. There's so many good players here, and I'm sure Habs management has their eyes on a lot of these guys. Now, of course, Tankathon has Montreal picking Cole Eisenman, which I don't necessarily believe is going to be the case, but we don't know. There's a lot of great prospects here. I have made it very clear that I love Zane Perak. Uh, Z Boyum is now going up a lot of draft boards after his amazing performance at the University of Denver, Denver University, not sure which way you say it, but they won the national championship beating Jacob Fowler, Habs prospect, and Boston College. But there's a lot of guys here, Jesse Caden Lindstrom, and even if you slide down a bit, Berkeley Cat now being mocked at 10th. Tisha Ginla, you don't even see him on this list. I think they had him at about 11th. So realistically, I think just playing some good hockey is all we can ask from the Montreal Canadiens. Now guys, let us know in the chat. You see these prospects, right? We always love to ask you guys who your favorite prospects are. I see some comments for Iserman already. Um, I also see a comment from Matt saying tank. Hey, I'm down for it. Uh, Denise says Hudson play a good game and the Habs lose the game. Hey, we're all up for that. Um, Jesse, after these recent performances, maybe from Zeev Boyum, maybe from some other guys, is it, has your mind changed? I know you're a big Demidov guy, and I think there's still a real chance Montreal could land him. And I know you also quite like Cole Iserman. Um, is there anyone that's kind of shot up that draft board for you? Is there any, like, maybe sleeper picks around this range that you like? Or are you pretty much set on that offensive forward kind of guy? And honestly, if you are, I, I'm totally on board too, because that's definitely the Habs' biggest need offensive forward type of guy you know in a, in a perfect sort of world i think that what's going to be big for them is is going for size which is also why i'm very interested Kate lindstrom demi dov you know for me is um you know obviously we're not ruling out getting that first pick just putting that out into the universe as well obviously macklin celebrini would be a very much welcome montreal just for the skill but also again the compete level which i think is so amazing to see for for winning hockey of course um you know so that's it i i feel like size could be important but as long as we're kind of getting that offense you look at cool eyes i mean you wonder like okay is this too much of like a caulfield type of player you know besides the first name of course sort of thing but it's like look at cool eyes i mean it's like there's a little bit more size there at, at six foot two he's not exactly the same type of player there. But I think something with the kind of that complete sort of package where, you know, you're looking maybe at a Lindstrom, you know, um, you know, obviously some guys are really shooting up at the right time. You have to feel like teach again, that almost fits kind of that mold of the slap a little bit where you see like the tools are there. It's just a little bit rough, but like it's worth it to sometimes wait and to put a little bit of TLC into a player like that, right. For what they can really become. So I'm really excited. Of course, I think it's going to matter so much of, where we kind of land and i think from there that's going to give us a really idea of okay who's really in our wheelhouse here and who makes the most sense yeah and i'm seeing a ton of comments here uh matt saying iggy i'm down for tisha ginlam all depends where the habs draft and seeing and see how high they value him because his goal scoring his skating and even a bit of his physicality has been quite quite good um denise saying celebrini hey we're, we're all on board with that uh, matt saying lindstrom injury history scares me uh, but the right before <laughs> this is actually kind of funny we got then it's all says Lindstrom, and we got Lindstrom, then Lindstrom, and then Matt saying, Lindstrom injury history scares me, and then Lindstrom, 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 and then Lindstrom. <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of love for Caden Lindstrom okay. in this chat, and I love okay. it too, but I'm seeing some comments too, that yes, the injury history is a bit scary, there's no doubt about that, um, it, but when a player is young, they can often bounce back from these things a lot easier, right? But uh, I see some comments in chat that I actually am, I, I tend to believe as well, I really think Caden Lindstrom is going to climb these draft boards, and it wouldn't surprise me to see him going before the Habs pick, Jesse. Now, I know we've heard that talk about Tisha Ginla, but as you get towards the draft, there's been a tendency in recent years to draft big players with high upside a little earlier than you would expect. Just look at the Minnesota Wild last year. I forget what the guy's name is. I was looking at it today, and I'm also a Minnesota Wild fan, but their 19th pick in the draft last year. They picked him. He had eight points in 34 college games as a center this year, but they picked him because of his size, right? 6'2", big guy. He's looking to transfer colleges. Could still end up being good. Teams tend to reach a bit more now than they ever did before on players with decent IQ, solid size, and solid skill. Knowing that, do you think it's quite possible that Caden Lindstrom jumps up ahead of the Habs pick as much as a lot of people really, really want him? 
Yeah, well, we're seeing that even with Slaff, right? I think with a lot of GMs, they're really noticing it this year, and they're going to definitely be taking that account when they get to the draft table next year because obviously Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield, amazing electric hockey players in their own right, but there's just something that size affords you that with these smaller players, they they can't quite do. There's certain things that Slaff, he can just do on the ice, right, as a result of that. And I feel like that is huge. Um, of course, you know, like skill is always going to be important. So size isn't everything now. But I think, you know, for the Habs, I don't think it's lost on them. If we're trying to build like a playoff type of team, that size is just so important. Like, give me a like in, in the chat. If you guys remember the days of like being a Habs fan of Brian Gianna. Oh, yeah. And he's just skating to the offensive zone. He just gets to the blue zone in the playoffs and the blue paint, you know, and he just gets completely turned around. You know, he just gets stopped. You know, he was a good player, but just later on in his career when he was with the Montreal Canadiens, like, size matters. It's tough to get in that offensive zone if you're not having that size there, right? So, while it's not everything, and I'm so happy that the Habs haven't let that determine everything. I know Caulfield was there a little bit earlier. Still love having him on the team, but it's just having that balance, right? I think it's great to have the Caulfield's. But just, you know, balancing out with that size as well, I think will be huge for this team going forward. Yeah, for sure. I completely agree. Now, we have we have a question from Denise. Could you answer this question? If we gave three good defensemen, plus our two picks, plus another young prospect for Celebrini, who cool. I think it depends on who the three good defensemen are. Because, I mean, like, it depends. San Jose technically has the highest odds at this moment of getting back on Celebrini. And he also got the Blackhawks. He got the Ducks. The Blue Jackets, of all the teams that might be likely to get the number one pick, probably the Blue Jackets and Senators are most interested in a player that's more uh, further along in their development process, I would say, just simply because the Blue Jackets have Lion A. Hope he's back playing at some point soon. A really unfortunate situation surrounding him. Hope he's doing well. Uh, Johnny Goudreau as well. Like They, they got some talent there, right? Zach Wierenski. But then you got these other teams that are rebuilding very much. Still the Ducks kind of coming out of it. Montreal still kind of coming out of it. And the Black, like, uh, Blackhawks, Ducks, all these guys, even Seattle. But like, realistically, I think to get the first overall pick, I think it's rarely worth the price that you would have to pay to get it. Like, whoever gets that first overall pick, they can ask for a King's Ransom. And whatever team is desperate enough to get Celebrini and that unbelievable upside that he has. I mean, all skill he has already. Guys, don't forget, Celebrini, if he wins the Hobie Baker, which he very well might. There's some competition. Will Smith is good too. But hey, if Celebrini wins the Hobie Baker, he'll be the youngest Hobie Baker winner ever by a mile. The current record holder is Jack Eichel, who is 18 and a half. Celebrini won't even be 18 when he wins it, if he wins it. This guy is unbelievable. People forget that he's a year younger than college freshmen usually are, and he was arguably the best player in the nation. So, you know, I know we got the Bedard hype from last year, all that stuff. Three good defensemen, two first round picks, ah, and another young prospect for Celebrini. It depends which defenseman we're talking about. But I think the team that might land Celebrini, unless they have a big need for defensemen, I think it's just one of those situations, Jesse, where Montreal's like, I just don't feel comfortable giving up that much. And the other team is like, I, I don't know if I if I want to take anything for Celebrini, considering how good he could be. This is a great question, though, all the same, right? Because Kent Hughes has mentioned on, on camera live, you know, on the record, saying that he's open to trading up or down at this year's draft, you know, with with any and all of our picks, right? And I have to feel like there's a higher likelihood of him trading up at this draft, again, with the idea of really doing it right, maximizing this opportunity to really pivot from there in the future. So maybe that's not a Celebrini for all the great points you mentioned. While I will say that he's not a generational talent, at least not touted as of yet, which makes him up for grabs, where Conor Bedard, you almost could never trade to get that first overall pick you know with him it can be done but like you said it's going to be a haul but like i think very likely you know like a very good probability is trading up even at this year's draft mm -hmm. getting the second or third to get a shot at either a demi dog or a caden lindstrom which i think fits exactly what we're going for in, in their own right so i think very interesting to monitor going forward and i just have a slight correction i somehow despite being on twitter on reddit on every hockey forum all day every day i somehow missed that celebrini already won the hobie baker jesse um I, I i don't know how we missed that but we did so there you go youngest hobie baker winner ever thank you very much to all you guys in the chat for correcting that dumb mistake it's just one of those things i guess it slips through the cracks sometimes when you're looking at mostly hab stuff i guess you just don't notice it was a busy weekend so maybe i just 
I missed it, but thank you very much for, for pointing that out. Uh, you're very welcome, Dennis, or Denny, for the answer. Matt asks, do you see Newhook as a top six or bottom six player moving forward? Is it okay to cop out and say middle six? Um, realistically, I think Newhook's upside is closer to top six than bottom six. I think this season he's already on like a, a roughly a 50-point pace, a bit over a 50-point pace, uh, despite being injured partway through the season. And since coming back from that injury, he has been really, really good, right? I think his upside is a, a solid scoring middle six, but closer to top six winger, or maybe center if his face-off percentage uh, stays improved like it has been as of late. But I don't know, right? I think Newhook on Doc's wing, or just like those two guys kind of playing that two-center game could look really good for the Habs' second line moving forward. But there's so many moving parts, right? Especially if the Montreal Canadiens go out and make a splash in free agency this year, next year, whenever it is, or they make a trade for a, a nice star player. Then you have Alex Newhook, who's kind of like, you, you just have him as a really, really good third liner. I can see a world, Jesse, where Montreal has is one of those teams where like all four lines are very, very good, kind of like we had on that Stanley Cup final run, where that third line and second line, there's really not much of a difference. So while technically Newhook might end up playing in the bottom six, he doesn't play the role of a bottom six player. I think if I had to choose, I'd say closer to top six. What are, what are your thoughts? That's, that's a great question, Matt. It is, and he is playing really well. So this is going to be fully under his control. If he continues to play so well, you have to feel like it could trend towards the bottom, you know, to a top six rather. And I have to feel like starting next year that that's where he will be at with Kirby Doc. However, I feel as this this team continues to evolve, that on the championship level team that we maybe want this team to be, that Alex Newhook would be an absolute phenomenal 3C, which is, I think, kind of part of the plan as well, if you want a really solid team and you're a good team, you need a very good player as your 3C. And I love the way that he plays the game. Not to get, again, not just with the heart, but, you know, also with the skill there as well and the style that very much suits this team. So, you know, I have to feel like this is kind of in the future, but for right now, obviously, we need him in that top six and playing very important, you know, minutes. But, I mean, if he continues this play, I mean, his future – is completely in his hands, mm -hmm. right? And if he continues to just play very well, he can absolutely be a top six player for this team. I agree. And again, like he's from the city I'm from, right? Alex Newhook, his dad was my gym teacher. Like this dude, he played basketball with my brother when we were growing up. Like I, I love Alex Newhook. I would love for him to end up being a top line talent. I think he has all the potential in the world. Just a matter of seeing it translate to the NHL ice. And I think we're starting to see that that spike in his development. Super excited. I'm going to go through some of the chats here, guys. So, um, I mean, look, with there's, there's a lot of stuff we can talk about. We're going to bring you right until the game. So stick around if you just want a nice transition from here to the game after. This is your spot to be. Also, thank you guys for crossing the 100 like plateau. Really, really appreciate it. We got almost 300 people in here waiting for that Lane Hudson debut. And hey, if you haven't hit like, you haven't hit subscribe to chat here with all these other Habs fans, hit like, hit subscribe right now. We'd really appreciate it. I see uh, Pizza saying New Hook Doc Wa. That's a line I can definitely see next year. And I see Noah saying New Hook has a 53-point pace this year and he's 23 years old definitely playing like a top six i'll just toss that out there what do you think about new hook doc Wah, jesse i think that's a line that a lot of people have hypothesized and to be honest i can i can totally see it i mean i think it's it's a line that makes a ton of sense on paper and i think it makes a ton of sense in practice as well some very smart players together joshua Wah with with kirby doc right i feel you know like joshua was showing the past that he plays very well with really good players obviously new hook as well just kind of getting in there being able to kind of win even some puck battles with it a little bit of a smaller stature i love that i love seeing that like honestly i love that line i love that you got a little bit of different things there joshua Watt hurt so much not seeing him in these last couple games i think he's just been such a great story you know too bad that he couldn't kind of finish it off these last couple yeah. ones right but definitely you got to feel like he's going to be putting in a, a good summer's worth of work he's going to be coming he's going to want to play on that second line next year and it's going to be his to lose. And I, I mean, I'm really looking forward to that. I could see these players really playing well together. Yeah, it, it's going to be so cool. There's a lot of there's a lot of people putting some lines here. Jesse, this one might be my favorite. Josh Goss, Alex Newhook, Jesse Poirier, the best third line in the NHL. <laughs> cool. I don't think you want to see me on skates. I can I can move, but barely. Uh, yeah. I, 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 well, yeah, like I feel like I'm one of the... You, I don't know how many hockey YouTubers actually played hockey growing up because I didn't, full disclosure. Like, I, I think I've said that before. I, I, I can skate, but uh, not well. So, anyway, just, just you know, some, some inside info. Jesse, can you? Yeah, yeah. What about you? You, <laughs> you? you can definitely skate better than me, right? 
Yeah, I was more of a goalie though. So right. that kind of restricted that, you know, uh, with hockey and everything else. So I always big love for goalies. My thing about it was that it's like I never needed to get off. I just wanted to play all the time, you know, so that's why I was in Nets. You know, I was like, okay, I get to play the whole game. I mean, it makes sense. It's like me in basketball. I always hated getting subbed out, but sometimes you, you understand. But, uh, you know, let's let's get off our personal stuff because we got another super chat. We got Noah coming back into the chat. Shout out to you, Noah, with the $10 donation, the first super on a live stream. Thank you so, so much. He said, I am so excited for Lane Hudson, man. Thank you guys for all the top-notch takes and content and hard work for us. LFG, let's go yes <laughs> let's go let's spam some emotes noah. there for noah shout out to you noah for the ten dollar donation matching the top donation of the stream from angie and by the way uh denny matt you guys channel members see these emotes that i'm putting in chat uh you guys can uh, can send emotes now that you're channel members i got we got these four we got brad marshall crying we got kirby we got slapzilla and we got nick suzuki on a suzuki so uh we <laughs> haven't we haven't gotten to break those out in a while so hey feel free to feel free to use all that stuff um Let's have a look. Matt says Nick Nick Goose will sabotage the Habs as a Leaf fan. Yeah, I mean, look, Nick Nick Nick's. I'm not gonna comment on his fandom. All right, he. I think he likes another certain team more than he does the the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'll leave it at that. Uh, it is what it is. Matt with the with the Kirby donation. We got pizza saying Suzuki on a Suzuki. Yes, 100. percent And Noah, I just wanted to say thank you again for your kind kind words. Saying thank you for the top notch takes and content and hard work. Yeah, we we love doing this every single day for you guys. And like we've said a million times, without the fans, almost 300 people tuning in at almost 7 p.m. on a Monday to watch us. Like it's unbelievable. So thank you you guys seriously for making this something that we find so so fun as we get another super chat jesse from wazo premiere two dollars and 79 cents the first super chat from wazo on any stream thank you so 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 much there's no message though so wazo if you have anything to say in the chat if you're a subscriber you can subscribe send a message in the chat we will respond to it in priority order because you you donated to us and we are extremely extremely thankful for that for all you guys um Jesse, I'm going to look through the chat again. Uh, might as well look right at the bottom. Thank you all for the kind words. All the people who are, who are giving us love in the chat here. Just amazing stuff. Um, I see. Anyone think Mayu will make the Habs next year? That's an interesting one, Jesse. We, we've talked a bit about Mayu, but nothing like really crazy when it comes to Mayu. Uh, well, we're going to have to hold on to that, actually, because we have another super chat. I mean, the super chat trade is rolling. It's like a waterfall here, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, Memphis man. Memphis Sander with the first super chat ever on a stream. Lane Hudson hat trick of hat tricks tonight. Why not? <laughs> Why not a hat trick for Lane huh. Hudson? If that happens, Jesse, okay. I think, let, let's say Lane Hudson, do you think, okay. Let, let's put this in perspective. Will he start on power play two tonight? Just yes or no? What do you think? Yes. yes. They're putting him position right from the beginning. Okay. If he scores on power play two, do they just do they just throw Matheson out the window and do they just they just let Hudson go on that first power play so we can pass to Slav? Yes or no? <laughs> he's on thin ice. True. We know Slavzilla. You know he's a fan favorite. You gotta you gotta feed the flat Slavzilla. He's a hungry boy. He needs to eat. He needs to. <laughs> You know, so Matheson's been noticed, you know, he's got that competition now. If he doesn't feed Slavzilla, you know, Hudson's gonna, you know, but no, we love Matheson. We're not trying to forget about him, you know, now that just that Hudson is here, you know, and everything else like that. But uh, to be honest, you know, they both offer so much great things to this game, you know, but uh, yeah, you have to feel like Hudson, you know, he's going to be knocking at that door. Oh yeah, for sure. I see, I see Blanco saying, wait, Hudson's playing. Yes, he is. He is absolutely playing. He's wearing number 48. This is his debut. That's why we're here. That's why we're so excited. That's why we have so many wonderful fans in here celebrating with us. What a day. Um, I see Matt saying, we need that Kent Hughes chef's hat emoji. Jesse, that is one of the best ideas I've ever heard. We gotta, we gotta get on that. We gotta get, this is what he's talking about for all you fine people. We need this as an emoji ASAP. We got a lot of little animations, fun little stuff here. Um, you know, might as well talk a bit about Slaff. We got a few minutes before the game starts, but uh, let, let's talk a little bit about Slaff because we love talking about Slaff. We just talked about the power play. One thing Slaff has been doing great as of late, Jesse. I'm, I got this ready. You guys, I don't know if you guys see all these animations in the videos. We try and put them in there, but Slaff, oh no, is it that one or is it this? Oh no, where is it? Is it not working? Oh no, please don't tell me that my pictures are not working. No, they are working. Where is where's this where's the slap office? Oh no. Okay, hold on. Hold stay with me, guys. I gotta find this because uh for some reason it's it's, it's not working. Uh then no, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Slaff Skotsky. There it is. Here we go. <laughs> slap in his office, right? So this is something yeah. he's been doing fantastic as of late. Sticking in his office right in front of the net. He's even if he's not getting a point in every single game, your eyes slot, there's some Easter eggs in that photo. Take some time to go back and look for them. 
even if he's not <laughs> registering a point in all these things, Jesse, the amount of shots that he is affecting in front of the net has been crazy. Like his his presence on the ice has been improving every single game, even into the final two or three games of the season. How impressed have you been with seeing Slav adapt his game to be in front of the net now? Like he, he's just something that he didn't look comfortable with at the start of the year and now is probably the Habs' best player at doing that. Yeah, he's pestering the opposition goalies. And that's one thing is you want to get underneath their skin. That's arguably the most important player for that team, right? But it's really such a skill to be able to do that, right? Like NHL goalies are so good nowadays that you basically need to obstruct their view or tip it to get the puck in the net. So like what Slaff is doing is very important. That's why we're seeing it's contributing to goals, you know, so much and having such a great effect. For sure. Oh, Jesse. Oh, we, the super chats just keep rolling. They just keep coming. And oh, we got another one from Felix Gagnon. Best Habs content on YouTube. Thank you so, so much, though. Hey, I mean, we are also huge hockey junkie fans. There's a lot of other great content. Drew Deeks, a guy who's a friend of the channel. Amazing guy as well. It's a sick podcast. There's a bunch of Habs stuff, but thank you guys all for thinking we're the best for tuning into us. Really, really appreciate it. Jesse, he says this. I'll let you finish this first because uh, that gives me time to think of an answer. So I'm, you know, <clears throat> so I look great. Complete this phrase. Lane Hudson is the prospect I am most stoked to watch since who? Wow. That's a good question. Like, right since Nick Suzuki kind of coming over, like, from Vegas, you know, kind of thing where he's still new, you know, kind of thing. We don't know quite what we have, but this is the type of level of player that we're talking about. This is the level of skill since Nick Suzuki, even though he was a little bit further ahead in his development, that's who. Nick Suzuki, I like that answer. You know what? It's weird because, okay, we also got another super chat. We'll get to that in a second. We're going to finish this one first. Thank you, Derek. Um, So I wanted to say Cole Caulfield, but I'm not going to lie. Like my level of hype for Hudson right now might actually surpass at the time my level for Caulfield because I loved Cole Caulfield, wow. but I wasn't like, I wasn't as into the Habs, right? So I, I don't even know, like, be, because you know, for a while I didn't really follow the Habs super super closely for a few years but of course we've been getting back into it I, I might say Nick Suzuki as well though Jesse because I, I remember I remember being really really excited for him and and seeing you know what when we traded when we traded uh Pacioretty away and all that stuff I was like oh who are we getting back and I just bought in right you saw Tatar play well so I might also answer Nick Suzuki it's a weird weird answer but uh I, Caulfield's very very close for me as we have the official lines um, the official line tonight is Hudson Savard, guys. So just wanted to put that out there. But excellent question, Felix. We got some great answers here. We got Guy Lafleur as a potential answer. Yeah, really, really <laughs> yes. great question. Derek with the super chat. Oh no. Oh wait, I gotta click back in. My bad. Here we go. There we go. Derek with the super chat. Habs fan in Vancouver here. Love the channel. Shout out to you, Derek. The first super, first super for Felix as well. I was in Vancouver just a couple months ago. I'm not gonna lie. I, look, I live in Quebec City, but Vancouver is probably my favorite Canadian city. Jesse, you ever been there? Because Vancouver, it's far away. Thank you for tuning in, uh, you know, three hours earlier than what we're doing here, 4 p.m. for you. I just love Vancouver, and it's crazy to see that we got fans that span coast to coast. Definitely know it is so cool, and around the world as well. I haven't been to Vancouver since I was about two years old. I have been to BC a little bit older. We did a cross-Canada road trip oh, when yeah. I was about 10 years old, about a really epic being in Golden BC out in the canoe, out in the lake and everything else like that. So beautiful part of the world, but definitely need to head to Vancouver sometime soon again. Yeah, thank you so much, Derek. Really appreciate it. I'm taking a look through Twitter. That's why I'm looking over here. The people are standing, clapping for Lane Hudson. Excuse me. He did his solo lap. Excuse me. Oh my gosh, Woo! this tea is, oh, dude. I don't know what it's doing, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's looking amazing for Lane Hudson. So pumped. I'm trying to find uh, if there's anything breaking, I'll let you guys know. Um, we got Matt saying, uh, Hockey Junkie, Habs Digest, and Lego Rocks are the best channel. I say really, really appreciate that. Shout out to all these other creators as well because, like, it's it's not easy stuff to do. Um, of course, Hockey Junkie, thank, like, congrats to him for going to his first Habs game. Amazing stuff. I know he had an amazing time. Unfortunately, uh, Jack, I, you know, couldn't really play in that thing. But, hey, it is what it is. Then he, then he says, Guy Lafleur, most exciting since Guy Lafleur. And we got some people saying, what time is puck drop? Puck drop should be soon, guys. As Jesse, it's now 7 p.m. Denise says, see you later. I think a lot of people are heading over to tune into the game. So, you know what? We might just end it there, guys. If there's any final questions, comments, if there's anything you guys want to say, leave it there now. We'll try to get to it. We'll clue this up within the next five minutes before the puck drops. Stick with us until then if you want. Um, but just, again, a big thank you to everyone who tuned in to this Lane Hudson episode of, of Habs Digest. Jesse, any, uh, any closing remarks before we let the people finish with their final questions, comments, concerns, before they head off to watch one of the most hyped games of the season? 
the state will live as infamy. It'll be nice coming back to this vid, you know, just know him. This was his first game, right? I think, you know, as Habs fans, we're, we're right to be excited, right? We're kind of turning the page in our rebuild. And we're starting to get those reinforcements, those really skilled players, which are really going to be a huge part of this rebuild. We forget all these great assets that they're just going to come and keep joining already this very fledgling, talented team, right? So another step in the huge, in the right direction for the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, unbelievable stuff. And thank you guys all for the kind words. Let's go, Lane. Felix saying stuff I can't say if we want to stay monetized. Uh, just everyone, thank you so much for, for, for tuning in. It is what it is. What people's like is your positivity. Th thank you, Wazel. Thank you for the donation earlier. That, there's your message. Yeah, we, we love the positivity. We are positive people. What's the point in being negative about the Habs, even if bad things happen? Hey, you know what? Like, like we've said before, if we come out here and we give these negative takes, even if we're right, you like, let's say we say, something super negative and then people people won't come back to us and say oh wow you were right when you were negative no nah, it's about the positivity because even if we're wrong it's okay we're overly optimistic that's what we would rather do um yeah just amazing amazing stuff uh final question maybe from eboy there's a lot of stuff going on here have you guys been enjoying the habs prospect on youtube i love that person lots of good videos jesse i have watched them have prospect videos we've we've uh, shouted them out in a number of videos one of the top channels if you guys want to see some habs prospects i think you should go over check out Hab prospect videos on youtube they have stuff for all the habs prospects um but i think that's going to do it jesse any final words before we send them off to the game i'm stoked let's get it Woo! big game tonight phone zone time baby all right well thank you all for tuning in that'll do it for this episode of habs digest if you enjoyed this stream leave a like on your way out we're at 140 maybe we can get 10 of you to give that like make it up to 150 matt says let's go the game is not a blackout for me we hope you guys all enjoy the game hopefully it's not blacked out for you and as always leave a like subscribe to the channel I'm Josh Goss for my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.